All right, welcome to Executives Airsoft. If you haven't figured out by now, today we're going to be taking a look at noodles. Just to get this out of the way from the beginning, um, both these units are PVS-5 binoculars um, bought from a uh, night vision refurbisher in California, uh, Tynite, in uh, Tynite Industries, I believe. Uh, Justin, you mind walking down uh, your setup real quick? Yeah. I have a PVS-5 essentially in a uh, CNC milled body. Both the ocular and the objective lenses are set for PVS-5 kind of, well not kind of anything, it's PVS-5. And uh, on my rear as a, like a lens protector I have a little uh, one inch Butler Creek flip cap. And uh, uh, that's about it. It's on a Rhino mount with a J arm on my replica airframe. Uh, what, what do you got for the counterweight back there? Uh, it is a uh, EO, EOG, I believe. Yeah. EOG, sorry, EOG counterweight pouch with just a little bit of a bungee cord and a little little block of IR tape for identification. All right. Mine's the sister unit to Justin's monocular here. Um, CNC body the same, uh, PVS-5 ocular lens is the same, but if you can look here, I have a PVS-7-14 style objective lens. Um, I've done the Butler Creek uh, cap mod where I've taken a, a Butler Creek cap, put a shield lens in, in there with it, and then I milled out at a tiny little pee hole in there so I can have it as a twilight cap. Uh, also running it on a J-arm and rhino mount um, and I've rigged up a paracord with a little clip here to keep it as a safety lanyard. Uh, for a counterweight I don't have a real counterweight but I just have an MS2000 strobe so if need be I can turn it on a strobe or open it up the cap so it's visual light instead and then I have two IR reflective uh, patches on the sides um, and this is on my uh, Bravo uh, OpsCore fast ballistic helmet. Um, I want to talk about uh, what we've used them with. We've only really had them out at, uh, together at the same time at one op. Uh, we, we ran these at Irene. Um, they worked They worked very well. We like to say we went around and we were running around and being all tactical, but in actuality, we just went up on the center tower as high as we could get and rain hate down on people for about as long as we could. Yeah, <laughs> until my goggles fogged up, and then you can't, you can't see anything <laughs> out of them anyway. Um, um, I, th I think it is worth mentioning that both units are uh, a Gen 2 Plus, so there is a certain amount of uh, auto, auto gating that goes on, which is nice for when you're seeing yeah, brighter lights getting shine shown at you. It like these are older units from the '80s, so it's technically like really uh, primitive auto gating. Um, I, f I forget the actual name is for it, but they do have a uh, sort of protection. Although you got to be careful if you're hit with the strobe, flip it up, get it away because there's still uh, you can still damage and get get blems. Um, my unit's pretty crystal clear. Um, I haven't spotted any blems through the unit. I, you have a couple blums in yours. I have. There, there's, there's several in there, but they're so small and like distanced apart that it, you hardly even notice when you're focused on actual whatever your target is, whether it be just an object or a person. You hardly notice them, especially when you have it uh, focused into the correct distance. It's not that bad. Uh, We've had them out, or at least we've been playing around and uh, using them in just little uh, local games and just messing around in our little private field. What would you say the maximum range for these are? A uh, little bit over 300 feet, maybe maybe 150 yards on maximum effective yeah, range? Yeah, maximum effective that you're going to be able to see uh, practical range. I mean, I probably wouldn't really try to especially for airsoft purposes, use them past 50 yards or so. Just, when it comes down to it, uh, it's it's hard to engage people, kind of, unless you're used to it, because, you know, it throws off uh, 
kind of your, your peripheral. Yeah, your, your, your peripheral and your depth perception with the binoculars. Just nowhere, nowhere near even just using your eyes in the dark. But these these are definitely a large, fast improvement over a Gen 1 unit if you've ever messed yes. around with one. Like, you, you don't have to rely on an IR light. I mean, th these aren't for, uh, PVS-14s, but we both got them together for the price of less than a, a, a used, beat-up PVS-14. <laughs> Substantially less, yes. Uh, he, he, I, he got his for... I got my entire package um, with a Skull Crusher for five hundred dollars. Yeah, I got I got mine with the uh, the clear tube for um, a little bit under seven, and I also got a skull crusher and a couple other things with it as well. So I mean, when when you look at it as far as comparing it to a you know Gen One unit, which is a decent one, if, if you're looking at a couple hundred dollars already, you can find a deal like this. That it's a heck of a lot not to pass it up i mean you're, you're getting for quality what you're getting out of it and what you're able to do with it is a lot better and i mean these are these are not the gen 3 unit i mean they're they're not going to compare but as far as airsoft goes your engagement distances are yeah. <laughs> between 30 between 30 and uh 150 feet on average and you're going to see everything in that range plus so i mean it's 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 uh hard to not not find these useful on a vast improvement out over that. For for airsoft, they do the job. You can't you can't knock them for the price. For the price, they're perfect. We're gonna take a look at some footage. Uh, what it actually looks like through the tube uh, at ranges of 50 feet and 100 feet, and we're gonna see um, with an IR light and without an IR light. I hope you liked the video. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah.